Well, thank you for joining us again. It is time for the entertainment segment of the morning show, and uh, we will definitely have a great time on this one. Now we're talking about arts, and we have our guest standing by, but let's just give a bit of a background on what we'll be talking about. Now, Impressionism describes a style of painting developed in France during the mid to late 19th century. Characterizations of the style include small, visible brush strokes that offer the bare impression of form, unblended, unblended color, and an emphasis on accurate depiction of natural light. Artists painting this type of art focus on what they've seen and try to bring it to life by showing what their impression is of the subject or object by using light. Now, color and the surroundings as an influence. And that's what Chidima Nwafo, a Nigerian visual artist, does as she explores different styles of paintings like realism and impressionism of her, of her images with the use of light reflections on the background of her images. Now, Chidima Wafo earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in Fine and Applied Arts, a painting major from the University of Benin, Edo State, South South Nigeria. Her works are mostly a representation or imagery of women and children with different bodily and facial expressions of which, of which she speaks volumes on the issue of emotions, self-transformation and mental health. Chidima Uwafo is joining us now online as we discuss how she's exploring contemporary art, addressing issues concerning women and mental health through her impressionist paintings as well as realism. Hello Chidima, thank you for joining us on The Morning Show. Hello. Thank you so much, Hello, everyone. Everyone. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you again for joining us. Morning, and now we're going to be having this beautiful conversation with you right there. You're right there in your studio. And, um, you know, give us a bit of background on you or your life as an artist, you know, how you started in art, how you got into this um, beautiful journey of art. Okay. Um, well, I would like to say that. I was born an artist, um, right from right from let's say primary school and secondary school. I have been doing like drawings, painting, um, mostly drawing though. Where I do drawing for my classmates, you know, when your classmates meet you up, I'm like, hey, can you do this drawing for us? You know, those kind of things. I've been drawing right from young age and um, fast forward to when I got to my university level, um, I decided to study fine art and along the line, I decided to because I was inspired by my lecturer, Mr. L. Drag Okotudonad. He, I really love him. He does impressionism kind of painting and expressive realism. So. I think it's kind of inspired me. I really love what he does with the colors, his, the way he, he represents realism, and it's inspired painting, and I decided to major in painting. I think that's how I, And then, okay, yeah, when I graduated, when I graduated, I, um, I started my professional career as a artist. That was 2022. Um, yeah, that's how my art journey has been. That's how I find my art journey as a full time artist. Okay, nice one. Now, you're a visual artist with your focus on impressionist um, style of painting. That's oil on canvas. You know, um, though you said a bit of that was um, informed by your lecturer back in school, right? why you decided to go on Impressionist paintings? Yes. Um, yeah, my Impressionistic um, love started from... Okay, I'm sure she would... All right, uh, please do try and join us again. Maybe we're having some network issues there. But that is, we, we're speaking with Chidima. Okay, Chidima is back. Chidima, can you hear us? Please go ahead with the, you were answering the question. I 
like I hear you now. So please go ahead. You are answering so, the question. Um, yeah. That's like I was saying. So um, my work, my my love for impressionism. I actually from the draft. Uh, I observed him paint. I was in the studio. I observed it. He did his uh, painting the way he handled the light, the way he's able to reflect the, the light of the images and you know, I really fell in love with the colors that and then from there I think that's like the gist of my, my impression and I got to do other studies too because um I think my art doesn't didn't really like start from impressionism. I I think I got to know about realism. I started with realism and as time went on I I I found out that I'm more interested in impressionism, but it doesn't mean that's where I'm gonna stop. You know, life we explore and we develop. Right. For now, I decided to I decided to study more on impressionistic painters. Uh, I decided to read more about Van Gogh and then other you know other Asian artists and you know I think I got interested in their use of um, colors and the way they are able to bring out details you know I started to you know do that for now yeah and then another person I'm also inspired by is Rembrandt Rembrandt I have this artist Rembrandt is one of the Asian artists and you know I love the way he's able to like represent and uh, like a, a, a vivid realism and the way he's able to like represent this sharp contrast between the light and the dark. I got interested recently in his painting and I think I, I, I decided to start, you know, showing it on my painting. And in a way, those are my old works and I have my recent work where I'm probably seriously inspired by Rembrandt's painting, you know, for now. His use of light, the way he's able to depict the natural light and being able to show that sharp contrast between dark and light. I'm inspired by it. All right. so, yeah, so, yeah, that's, that's my journey of right. Right. Okay, right, Chidima, I'm just going to say well done. Uh, you know, when you were talking, because I am also a graduate of University of Benin, and I know El Drago very well. Oh. You know, I'm very conversant with his work. Uh, like you said, his work practically leaps out, like you can really touch it real life. And so, uh, well done, you know, well done for, 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 for being able to capture that from him and then replicating it also. Now, my, my question to you is, I've seen some of your works, you know, being displayed and all that. I want to ask you, what is your best or most challenging artwork? Um... Okay, um, I think uh, I think uh, when you talk about challenging, is it in terms of time? Okay, in terms of time, I think I had a collection of painting that I did 2022, 2023, and it, it took a lot of time, you know, and a lot of mental work because I have to like figure out how to uh, make sure all the colors rhyme with each other because I try to like you know make the colors go with each other, both the background color and the the normal figure color. And then aside from that, too, the detailing of the wrapper was out of the world. Uh, not to say that all my works don't actually take time; they are actually challenging. Every piece of work brings up like a new challenge. For me to tackle, you know, it can be in terms of the colors, it can be in terms of the topic that I'm trying to depict, the emotion. So, like each work comes with its own um, challenge. So, but aside from that, I think 
I don't think I would call it challenge because I basically enjoy anything I'm doing. I enjoy everything I'm doing, but maybe let's say in terms of time, yeah, that can be challenging because I I might actually like have a particular time that I schedule for this, and then uh, uh, it's a time to bring out I want to talk about in that particular piece. So I'm not just doing a painting because I want to just paint the picture. No, I I try to show that emotion. I want that emotion to show on the figure that I paint. So trying to defeat that is kind of challenging. Bringing out that emotion. I want people to look at that image and then be able to feel that emotion that I'm trying to show on that particular figure. So, but aside from that, it's it's actually interesting it's a it's a very interesting journey for me it's a very journey. it's it's a challenge but i, I enjoy it you know, it's an interesting challenge to me so yeah but i think my most challenging work is the rapper work the three series of painting okay nice one Most of the um, time all right Okay, Patrick, want to ask one more question before I move on to the uh, okay. okay. Um so yeah, your your work basically deals mostly with emotions, things that people deal with on the, on a daily like issues and all of that. Mm. You know, I, I wanna ask you what impact would you say your work has had, you know, on maybe people, you know, looking at your paintings or people who have even gotten pieces, you know, from you. What impact do you think your work has had on them? Okay, so um, I think most times uh, as an artist, people that actually engage in your work, they, they tend to have the same connection. Like um, I've had people come up to me and they'll be like, wow, um, you know, looking at your work, it made me understand that I'm not alone on this particular issue and, you know, when we feel as women and, uh, you know, uh, there is this series of what I talked about um, the challenges that girls, girl child face in our society, especially in terms of the pressure of um, expectations of the society and how they tend to, how they tend to um, affect how uh, women react to the society, and um, I had a pretty interaction with other ladies that came around for the exhibition, and you know it was not just ladies to also some men, and you know they said, okay, I'm aware of this, and you know I, I'm going from it's like I, I want to question their stuff, you know, like I'm trying to tell you. That this is right or this is wrong, but I want people to question themselves out of this and ask themselves questions because I believe that through process of questioning comes um, changes and you know some changes in things. And I did this body of work because I wanted people to question themselves out of other expectation. Maybe by as a girl you're supposed to not be too ambitious as a girl you are you are not supposed to be too out there you're not supposed to you know like different different restrictions based on the fact that you're a girl or you know other expectations and sometimes they tend to um make some ladies tend to like cage themselves because of all those expectations and I mean, after the exhibition, I was I was able to get feedback from men and ladies that you know they they told me like okay I'm going to go home question this question this question and then but my favorite response was from a married man that said okay this is something that he has always been thinking about especially he wants to give his daughter the best you know he doesn't want to. He doesn't want his daughter to grow up in the future and be like, ah, 
you have like a lot of uh, restriction for me as my father and all, and he wants the best for And I know not to say that our parents don't want the best for us. Sometimes the way that um, those affections come out, uh, it's, it might not be the way it looks. You know, you might think that you are actually doing the best, but maybe it's not entirely how you think it looks. You know, so yeah, I think my work, people are able to like relate with it and you know ask themselves questions and you know, and I've had girls that also come to me and tell me that wow, this your work made me feel you know not feel alone like made me understand that we have other girlies out there that you know experience the same thing or other people out there that experience the same thing so yeah that's a good one Chidema. Indeed. i mean what you're doing is so laudable it's amazing how you're using your artwork you know to uh, promote and advocate for a cause talking about women talking about um, you know um girls talking about um, children and their mental health, very, very important. But let's talk about, you know, impressionist painting. We, now we are seeing most painters, painters using acrylic, fabrics, different, all, all forms of medium to achieve their artwork. Uh, what's the market like for impressionist painting in Nigeria at this time? Okay, I think, um, when you, not most people actually know that word impressionism, you know. Um, most random, uh, will I say, uh, people that are not really, we have people that love art, yeah, but I don't think it's everybody that really have that time to sit back and start reading that we have impressionism, we have expressionism, we have realism, but uh, there might be something like, okay, this one, this one does doesn't look like it. Aside from that, what I'm trying to say is that if you say it like, what is the market like for impressionism? I think art, we should just use the word art because most people that buy art, they might not really know the term impressionism, expressionism, and all that. But ex apart from few, apart from few that actually take their time to read about it. But if we talk about art, it's actually um, it's something that is coming up. Not most people, especially in Nigeria, you know, know about the art uh, market. Not pe most people actually know about it because, um, you know, I grew up in Onitsha and I, before I moved to Lagos, I'm coming from Onitsha. I remember when I was going home like a few months ago for Christmas and I was discussing with uh, one of the drivers I was trying to explain to him what art is all about. And then he was confused. He was like, wow, so this is actually a thing. I thought um, art is just about drawing or, you know, you drawing, drawing, and, you know, it's a child play to them, most people, because they don't actually understand that you can actually do art and, you know, market it out there and make money out of it. So I think if you talk about the local Nigerian, they don't know about the art market. But we see, aside from that, we still have people out there, maybe outside, that are interested in the market. And then we have few persons in Nigeria that are into the art and they understand the market. But I believe that with, uh, with a lot of publicity, like you know, doing exhibition, getting to, because most times, before I came to Lagos, was would I say it's because we don't we don't actually try to do exhibition over there or I don't know but I feel most of the whole thing is goes on in Lagos and most of the people in Lagos know about us you know but I feel we should market it more or uh, promote it more out there not just within Lagos or um, states that are close to Lagos, we can also market the art uh, scene out there, maybe like in other states that are not just Lagos and Abuja, not those major cities. Uh, and I believe with that, we will have more 
publicity or more people will get to understand the app. So, well, thank you so much, Chilima. Before we let you go, tell you know, you're talking about marketing our art. Yes, you are right. Art is doing very well in Lagos, in Abuja, and uh, we do hope it will be replicated in other states. But before we let you go, uh, tell us about these artworks of yours that you have exhibited maybe in galleries, either virtually, you know, or physically, or museums, where your artworks have been exhibited. And if you are planning to have any solo exhibition this year, can you tell us? Um, yeah, I've had the opportunity to to have some uh, group exhibition. I've not had any solo show yet, but I've had the opportunity to do an exhibition in South Pyramid Gallery, um, and I had the residency that just concluded last year, ending of last year, and that was in 1952 African Art. I, I our exhibition, and I'm currently having an exhibition, a group exhibition with Mitochondria Art Gallery. Uh, Mitochondria Art Gallery, which is in Houston, Texas, USA. And um, I also have another, like, upcoming group show, but um, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it yet, but for solo show, it's it's not something I've thought of for now. But group show, that's what I, you know, it's a plan that is going on. It's an upcoming show, but I don't want to talk about like, but I can talk about the one that I'm having, which is currently in Houston. The title of the work is a three piece painting three painting in one the series liminal space that's the body of work i was actually trying to talk about a state where i was in i created the work when i was actually like i i started my my art career that was like last two years and then i was in this space of um I was like, it was as if I was in between two spaces, you know, because it's like transitioning from one place to another and, you know, from one position to another position. And, you know, I decided most times I like to talk about what I feel at that moment. And, you know, I decided to do the painting. It was a three painting, liminal space, one, two, three. And it's currently going on at the Houston Mitochondria Gallery in Houston. So that's what I have to take for now. All right, amazing. Thank you so much, Lima. And we wish you the best in all these, you know, uh, exhibitions that you'll be having and, uh, of course, showcasing your works. And, of course, letting us in more on Impressionist painting. Thank you so much, Lima. Thank you for joining us. Thank you and congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's Chidima Owa for an impressionist uh, painter. She's an artist. And, you know, there was something she said that really got my attention when she said, just call it what it is, art. art. <laughs> <laughs> because it's true, you know, yeah. I, we, we, we that, you know, when you're very literate, you, you've done this research. You, you know the distinction. You know the distinction. But, but some mean, people are there like, what is, is art. Is that? I mean, come on. You know, but I do remember that there was a time, this kind of painting, you know, from the 19th century, my dad back then used to buy this particular kind of painting, this oil painting. Mm. But now we've seen how art has evolved. Yeah, you know, so what really got my attention is how as a young lady, she still holds on to this mm. um, 19th century kind of painting. When you have a good, our, yeah. But yes, it's not When you have a good teacher, yeah. right, when you have a good teacher, it's not hard. Yeah. It's not difficult at mm. all. I mean, the, the, the lecturer she talked about, mm. when I was in uni then, from my mm. diploma days into my degree days, mm. Drag is a legend. Wow. You need to see his works. I mean, the guy who made first class in fine art was his mentee. Mm. If you see the body of work, his name is Laulu Obende. If you see the work Laulu put, put out, his showpiece that was a crowning glory. He was, a, he, he, you know, like when you see life on canvas that can literally mm. leap out at you. Mm -hmm. Now, aside from that, the feel. The look of that, it was like a picture when you snap a picture to the barest detail. Mm. 
it was that detailed. So when she was talking, when, when she mentioned drag, I was excited because I know drag. And for me, because education is my focus, yes. I'd always say as a teacher, what are you teaching mm. your students? What are they taking away from the classroom? In my days in Uniben, I, I studied theater arts, but of course I majored in media. I had a lecturer then who was like a mentor to me also. Mm -hmm. His name is Dr. Marcel, he's a, he's a, he's a <laughs> professor now, Dr. Marcelino Sohaku. I mean, anybody who has gone through theater and mass comm in Uniben, mm -hmm. Okaku is a legend mm -hmm. also in his right. And he told me something. He said, Precious, you may not know everything about something, but know something about everything, everything. Yeah. and that's for me that, that that is one thing that has guided me even in my work in life generally something. I try to know something about everything mm -hmm. around me mm -hmm. what's happening I need to know because you don't know when so for me aside from the fact that yeah that makes you a better and a more rounded person but as a lecturer mm -hmm. I mean having this kind of testimonials from students who graduated yeah. I mean I left Unibed over 10 years ago but these are lessons that still stayed with me mm -hmm. You're talking about a young girl. You know, this is something, body of work, type of work. You're talking about 19th century, mm. and there's somebody this young mm. is replicating that kind of exactly. art now. Yes. It tells you she, has, she, had she had a good teacher. And so as a teacher, your reward is not in heaven. It's here on earth. Exactly. I say it all the time. <laughs> I mean, I, I am sure if drag had the opportunity to see this program yeah. if he's watching it he would be very proud to know, I, I i mean that's fine I, mean, I, I will make sure it's on it's on our channel you know we'll you know so, so drag is in fine arts i'm theater, in theater a k1 campus right mm -hmm. but as much as it's a small world that's to tell you that this lecturer is good at what he does and yeah. so so many years later I am remembering him and then I see somebody who's, who, who, who was his student and I'm excited because he shows the kind of excellence this man had when he came to his work exactly. and he told you the kind of passion you know, yeah. he had an impacting on his students. And so, I just, so I, I, I'm sorry, this is not uh, education, yeah, but... It's not. I wanted to just tell you that, Brasha. We still <laughs> have some stuff to go. It. And I know you heard that I lecture. Can't help you are it. totally excited. <laughs> I can't help it. All right, guys. So, lesson here is, whatever you do, be good at it, because you don't know where, uh, what posterity will remember you by. Yeah, yeah. That's the lesson they take yeah. away from me today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have to go on a break, but the entertainment segment continues, because we have some entertainment Indeed. stories to still bring to you. Stay with us. Thank you.